Okay, so for an outsider trying to break in, I do think writing a great original lead character might be the best thing you can do for yourself. And I talk about this a bit in my last video, number three. And, you know, I kind of talked about the why. But, you know, the bigger question is how. And so I'm going to try to talk a little bit about that as much as I can. Um, I do think writing interesting characters, it's more art than science. There's real limits to how much advice you can give or take. You know, I kind of think it's sort of like a marriage in my view. Uh, too much analysis is going to ruin the romance and mystery that you sort of need to keep things interesting. But that said, I do have some basic principles. And uh, my most basic principle is characters are only as strong as the quality of scenes they let you write. And I think oftentimes people get too big picture, especially at the start of things about characterization, when I think the most pressing need is to have characters who make interesting scenes. Now that's not all a character needs to do, obviously, but if the scenes you're writing for your lead character are kind of boring, it doesn't really matter what great thematic points you're trying to make or what big evolutions you have planned down the road or even what personal connection you have to that character because you're kind of failing job number one, which is writing something interesting enough to reward a stranger's attention because no one owes you that attention. Your writing has to seize it from the beginning and not let go. So for me, the most immediate goal when I'm creating a character is to come up with some new fake person whose voice or personality or inner conflict is going to be so interesting that they allow me to write compelling scenes over and over again in the middle of action but also in down scenes throughout the whole story. Now I don't create my characters with some specific strategy in mind. And I definitely don't work from some templates. Template, so I don't want to give the wrong impression here. I, I kind of will get enamored with some image or a phrase or a line or a scene or some dilemma and then I'll just kind of kick it around. Daydream, sketch it out, trial and error and then you know gradually something sometimes takes shape and then it's not even until I've written a few scenes until I actually know if I've got a character worth writing or not. And that's probably why all things even, I kind of prefer to write things on spec on my own than to develop them. Um, just simply because in the development process, kind of go from this big picture idea and then you do a step-by-step -step beat sheet of the story beats and then you go to outline and then finally you go to script and that's when you finally start actually writing scenes and that process makes sense for the other people involved because they want to know what they're paying for but for me it's kind of you know what putting the cart before the horse you know I'm building this entire edifice and I haven't even taken the first important step which is finding and testing the character's voice in actual scenes you know like what's the use of coming up with an entire plot without knowing if your characters are compelling and conflicted enough to even make three scenes interesting um, anyways that's sort of a puzzle process wise I had to kind of figure out for myself uh, and I think now I've, I've kind of got methods for developing my character's voice while also giving my partners you know whatever develop mental material they need on a step-by-step -step basis. But what I'm sort of getting at is this. For me, at least, characters tied to voice. You know, what makes them interesting overall? It's usually what they want. But what makes them interesting on a scene-by-scene -scene basis is how they pursue what they want. What they talk about, what they don't talk about how they use words to mask their intentions or their wants, 
or how they use words to distract or injure or seduce others. Um, at least on the page, that's, that's kind of um, the litmus test for these characters. Also, I think the quality of any lead protagonist is pretty inextricable from the quality of the story that can be told through them and their voice. Now, that's not always going to be the case. You know, so in a strong genre film, whether that genre is, you know, the horror or action or romantic comedy, story isn't necessarily always about the protagonist or their inner life or their voice so much as it's just the situation that they find themselves in. So you can have a sort of okay character anchoring a great film as long as their situation's compelling and the performer's charismatic and the genre thrills are, you know, amazing. But, you know, unless you've already got Jackie Chan, you know, um, ready to step into police story or Jamie Lee Curtis to step into Halloween, you're going to want a complicated, innately compelling character to carry your script, especially if you're trying to write for TV and especially if you're an outsider trying to break in just simply on the strength of your written characters on the page. So how do you do it? Again, lots of mystery, but I have noticed uh, some tendencies about strong lead characters, um, maybe primarily in the kind of last 20 years of TV in particular. And it's that they can often be described as this, X, but also, or actually, Y. That is, there's some innate conflict either inside the character or in the split between who they are and who they present themselves to be. So some examples. Tony Soprano is a mobster, X. But he's also suffering panic attacks and seeing a therapist, Y. Walter White is a high school chemistry teacher, X. But he's also got cancer and begins cooking meth to make money. Why? Carrie Matheson is a CIA agent. X. But her bipolar condition causes people to, dis to distrust her. Why? Uh, Don Draper is a successful advertising exec. X. But his entire life is predicated on stealing another man's identity. Why? Barry from Barry is a hitman. X. But he wants to become an actor. Why? You, know, you get the point. Uh, but I think... In these examples, it's this tension between what I've labeled the X and the Y of a character that not only drives the plot and the story, but also you know, the texture of the character's voice. Now, of course, you can take this formulation to a point of absurdity or banality. You know, Daisy Kaleidoscope is a talk show host, X, but she's also a serial killer of clowns, Y. Or Jojo McIntosh is a librarian, X. But he also masturbates in front of pigeons. Why? You know, there's limits to this. But I think this sort of X, but also Y type of characterization, uh, it can still be effective, uh, especially if X and Y are dramatically related somehow, and if they illustrate something thematically interesting in that connection. So, you know, Tony Soprano's gangster status and his neuroses are dramatically interesting, I think, because each side of this XY equation inverts expectations. On one side, about how gangsters behave, and on the other side, about the types of men who seek out therapy. And then in combination, these gangster and neurotic sides of Tony Soprano also seem to suggest something thematically interesting about the American male psyche at this stage of national decline. Now, you know, having this thematic, I think, is important, but I don't think you really start there because thematics are kind of easy, relatively speaking. You know, any bright high school sophomore can conjure up a theme about the dangers of capitalism or toxic masculinity or empire or whatever. And, you know, that's not that hard to do. TV commercials and blue checks on Twitter, they do it all the time. Um, and I'm not sure that's going to kind of get you through the door and get you paid for writing scripts. What I think will get you paid in Hollywood is the ability to write interesting scenes. Scene after scene, episode after episode, season after season. You do that, you'll start making some money and getting some opportunities because that's much, much harder to do than to come up with a timely theme. 
And I think it's really hard to write interesting scenes if you have boring characters who speak in kind of generic, direct voices. You know, they can find themselves in scenes and situations that are active and tense, but they're probably not going to be so interesting, especially not on the page, which is how they're going to come to people when you're breaking in. Now let's look at The Sopranos, because I think that's the best TV show ever made, and you know, I am never bored by a Tony Soprano scene. And a lot of that's because of James Gandolfini, he's kind of my goat. But also, in all of Tony's scenes, his X and his Y, they're always playing off of each other in dramatically interesting, unpredictable ways. And honestly, this kind of X and Y shit that I'm talking about doesn't do justice to Tony Soprano's complexity because he has more than that. He's got, you know, he's got one sort of mask with his mafia bros, then another one at therapy with Dr. Melfi, and then another one at home with his wife and kids, then another one when he's with his mom, then another type of mask when he's with his gumar. And, you know, that's pretty interesting, that multiplicity of kind of masks and personae. But what's really interesting is when these masks converge and do battle. When, say, Tony's mafia side leaks out during a therapy session, or when his kind of traumatized son, little boyness leaks out at the bada bing, or if a new therapy breakthrough leaks into a scene with Uncle Junior. And this unstable multi mask persona of Tony Soprano, it seems like it always gives the writers and Gandolfini interesting conflicts to stage in every single scene, in every single episode of every single season. Because Tony Soprano is never just one static thing. And to me, like, that's the genius of the show. There's lots of genius to that show, but that's maybe the core genius. Not only does Tony Soprano have these many sides to him, but he's and they're all kind of connected, but he's always surrounded by characters and placed into situations that are going to pull forth sides of his personality that he wants hidden, or is going to pit two different sides of his personality against each other. So what I'm kind of saying is, like, it's not enough to just have an X, but also a Y sort of character. You know, those sides need to be connected in some interesting way, and your character needs to then be placed in situations and surrounded by characters designed to um, produce unpredictability in terms of which side of this character his personality is going to be dominant in this situation. Now, I can kind of further illustrate this with a, an imaginary negative example uh, of the X but also Y formulation. So let's say you're, you want to write a procedural, procedural pilot where your lead character is a homicide detective. So you have your ex, kind of tried and true. But you're listening to me and you're like, okay, well, I need some kind of why. And so you're like, okay, I'm going to say my lead character is a homicide detective ex, but he has a hidden sex addiction why. Okay, so that's what you've got. You know, maybe a little predictable, that's okay. Um, but I kind of want to illustrate how you go about this might might still keep this character kind of boring on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. Because um, if you write that character in such a way that this homicide detective is always just a kind of homicide detective when he's investigating murders, and then it just happens to be a sex addict in his personal scenes, then there's no real inner conflict there on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. That character's X and his Y aren't competing against each other on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. They're just taking turns in the spotlight. And for this character to be unpredictable in a well-defined way, those sides need to be in constant conflict, in a push-pull. And then you also will need to find some kind of connection between homicide investigation and sexual addiction that makes them feel thematically related, or else that formulation is just going to feel like that, a formulation. It's going to feel hollow. Now, like I've been saying, like, I don't go into the writing process with an X but Y construction in mind, you know, um, and I don't, you know, a lot of my characters don't come up, don't come out fitting that construction. Like, I'll write stuff and then, you know, maybe when I'm halfway through or through a first draft, I'll step back and then I'll realize 
what's lurking there and then maybe in revision I'll define this X but Y that seems to be there um, in a way. But, you know, it is kind of a pattern I've seen in my work, in at least in terms of characters that I have later found to be um, kind of rich in a scene by scene basis. There's something specific there to work with. And, and I see it in work that I admire. I'll, I'm gonna give one last uh, positive example. Um, and this is one written by an outsider, um, Russ Cole of True Detective. He's a gifted homicide detective, X, who devoutly believes in his own homegrown sort of nihilistic philosophy, Y. So that X, but also Y, not only makes Russ pretty specific, but also that's what informs his very specific voice in the show. And not only does it give him an interesting voice, but that X, but also Y, that specific one, you know, it really makes us wonder what led him to that philosophical position and to this job. And not just that, this formulation makes us see some new thematic connections between the crime procedural, hard-boiled fiction, anti-natalist philosophy, and the role of flawed men in a fallen social order. All of those are kind of implied in this formulation. But mostly, most importantly, this conception of Rust Cole his insights and layers and this whole inner package of conflicts of a homicide detective who has this nihilistic philosophy, it makes scenes that would ordinarily be kind of boring and rote instantly a lot more interesting. So it's not just a ride along between partners, it's a ride along with partners with Russ Cole. It's not just an interrogation of a murder suspect, it's an interrogation of a murder suspect being done by Russ Cole. It's not just a double date, it's a double date with Russ Cole. And all these scenes, which could be boring in, with other kind of predictable characters, are now totally unpredictable and fascinating simply because of this one character's well-defined unpredictability. And the creator of Russ Cole, Nick Pizzolatto, he wrote the True Detective pilot when he was an outsider. He was a literature professor in Indiana. He didn't have any personal connections to Hollywood. Um, he only uh, shared a script when his novel got optioned by some agents. And this True Detective pilot, that was actually the first package of scripts that he shared with these agents that helped him break in. And is built on this um, uniquely conceived Russ Cole character. And it's that character that lured Matthew McConaughey, McConaughey to do TV back when movie stars didn't really do that sort of thing. And then once McConaughey was on board, then all of a sudden Woody Harrelson was very interested. And then all of a sudden you got McConaughey, Woody Harrelson, these scripts, and this whole package, and HBO orders the whole thing to series, even though up to this point, Nick had only um, written one and a half episodes of produced television. But he is now showrunner and creator of his own show on HBO. And all that started off with this character who had a familiar time-tested X homicide detective, but who had a Y that no one had really seen or heard before. Now that's not all the show had to offer, obviously. But I kind of think that was the main building block and the real hook for a lot of people. Now this isn't the only way to create an interesting character. Like I said, this is more an art than a science. It's not some foolproof template that you can just apply. But I do think an unpredictable character with an unfamiliar but very well-defined inner conflict will make it much easier for you to write an interesting original scene. And if you can do that, write one, just one truly interesting, original, unpredictable scene at the start of your script, then you're already way ahead in this game. And then now you just have to do it over and over and over again. All right. Thanks again for listening. And uh, good luck.